over 100 cable channels to choose from, and today I have to pick Fox News Channel when the O'Reilly Factor is on. Families to the soldiers serving in Iraq. And NBC News analysts insult the American Armed Forces. They're serving in harm's way in Iraq, and you called them mercenaries, sir. We asked NBC News and parent company General Electric to comment. We'll have a full report and analysis. He's articulate. Uh, I've been impressed with him when I've seen him in person. President Bush tries to give Barack Obama a compliment, but some say calling African Americans articulate is an insult. Also tonight, we're beginning to learn what horrendous things may have gone on behind closed doors as prosecutors slam Michael Devlin with dozens of sex abuse charges in the kidnappings of two Missouri boys. Trashing liberals and defending our fine president, loyal Republican poll that he is. Nope, there's no spin to be found tonight. Conservatism triumphs, as it always should. Not to mention, there's time for Bill to spend some tabloid trash. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thank you for watching us tonight. Attacking the military, that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. In a stunning display of hatred, NBC News military analyst William Arkin wrote two internet columns chastising members of the United States Armed Forces for daring to criticize civilian dissenters of the Iraq War. The columns appear on the Washington Post internet site. Dr. Strangepin is at it again. In a nutshell, Mr. Arkin isn't buying the argument that if you support the troops, you've got to support the war. I find that much of his argument reasonable. Unfortunately, as an attention-grabbing stunt, he called our soldiers mercenaries and, much, much worse, and thanks to Mr. Nospin, got more attention than he planned. So now the entire world knows what a horse's ass Mr. Arkin is. But, in my humble opinion, there's more to this picture than meets the eye as we watch Bill once again read from a teleprompter with his trademark practiced rage. Mr. Arkin is the perfect useful little idiot for Bill to wear his patriotism on his sleeve while wagging a finger at the oh-so-liberal media once again. And said it in part, quote, I've been mulling over an NBC Nightly News report from Iraq in which a number of soldiers expressed frustration that with opposition to the war in the United States. Through every Abu Ghraib and Haditha, through every rape and murder, the American public has indulged those in uniform, accepting that the incidents were the product of bad apples or even of some administration or command order. So we pay the soldiers a decent wage to take care of their families, provide them with housing and medical care, and vast social support systems, and ship obscene amenities into the war zone for them. And their attitude is that we should, in addition, roll over and play dead, defer to the military and the generals and let them fight their war. This NBC report is just an ugly reminder of the price we pay for a mercenary, oops, sorry, volunteer force. It is hard to believe that any responsible person would attack the military in this very personal way. Arkin implies that Abu Ghraib and Haditha define how Americans have performed in Iraq and flat out calls our military people mercenaries. That is, folks who fight solely for money have no patriotic intent at all. Ironically, the American military has fought for centuries to allow Arkin the right to say these vile things. We invited our All this wouldn't be so hard to swallow if Mr. Nosebin wasn't such a hypocritical little weasel. Because news posing as propaganda is as near to Bill as the next studio, as Fox News Channel programming is a veritable who's who of conservative pundits. John Gibson. Sean Hannity. I mean, don't you think that was really hurtful and harmful to the military? John Kasich. To the soldiers serving in Iraq? Let's address this. Brett Hume. These people mercenaries. Conservative Forbes way. magazine has its own show. Called them mercenaries, sir. Neil Cavuto. Let's address this. The conservative editorial board of the Wall Street Journal. Also said they were the Beltway the Boys. Mort's allegedly a lefty, but I think they're talking about how he holds a pen. Oh, and Roger Ailes, who's tied to both Rush Limbaugh and the Republican Party, runs the entire operation. She said that the soldiers should be grateful. I said that they should be grateful that people aren't spitting on them. Mr. Courage, huh? William Arkin has been a military hater for some time. He wrote a book called Code Names, where he exposed more than 3,000 coded titles, some of which were still classified. So there's no question. 
Arkin is an agenda-driven guy. The question is, why would the Washington Post and NBC News hire a person like this? As you know, Talking Points believes NBC News has taken a sharp turn to the left. It is a business decision made by three men. NBC Universal executives Robert Wright, Jeff Zucker, and Steve Kappas. With their approval, elements at NBC News spew out far-left propaganda on a daily basis and direct vicious personal attacks at people with whom they disagree. Wright, Zucker, and Kappas believe this is a responsible way to run a news division, but students of journalism know this kind of garbage is unprecedented at the network level. We asked NBC News for a statement regarding William Arkin, and here it is, quote, the comments in question were made by Mr. Arkin in his Washington Post column. He does not speak on behalf of NBC News. We'll deal with the Washington Post tomorrow, but notice how NBC didn't criticize Arkin's comments. Hard to believe. Bill O'Reilly is counting on his devoted fans to take his word for this and not check out his source. Others, like myself, who are not so trusting, will find it predictable that Bill has chosen to cherry-pick the most outrageous bits and in the process, managed to leave a few facts out. Watch him endlessly lambaste, oh-so-liberal NBC. Yet what's Arkin reacting to? Oh, it seems he's reacting badly to an NBC news story documenting many soldiers saying they think Americans must support both them and the war, a perfectly conservative point of view. And, somehow, Bill misses the fact that one of the objects of his discontent, Bob Wright, was retiring the day after he broadcast his vomit. Now, there's no sense in confronting the NBC News people about this situation. They're in too deep. They will not change course because that would expose them. But NBC's parent company, General Electric, makes billions of dollars off government contracts, including military work. Its CEO, Jeffrey Immelt, is aware of the Arkin problem and the tone of NBC News in general. It is Immelt who is responsible for this debacle because he has the power to change it. Fair-minded Americans can dissent from the Iraq war. We all know that. The war has not been waged effectively because of poor post-Saddam planning and the failure of the Iraqi people to put aside religious hatreds and fight for democracy. But clear-thinking people also understand that deposing a murderous dictator and trying to bring freedom to millions of oppressed people is a noble endeavor. Just ask the Marsh Arabs or the Kurds. The United States military has performed heroically in Iraq and Afghanistan in brutal environments. For any American, any American, to accuse them of being paid agents of oppression is disgraceful and far over the line of rational thought. NBC News and General Electric and the Washington Post will be forever tainted by this situation. Like William Arkin, they can run but they can't hide. Enough is enough. All Americans, all Americans should condemn this. And that's the memo. In a moment, we'll bring in Michelle Malkin and Kirsten Powers to analyze what's going on. That report when we come back. As the X-Files used to say, the truth is out there. Just don't count on Dr. Strange Spin to find it. <laughs>